Hey everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. This is Kana, you're in my corner, and I have a very special guest. And would this awesome special guest that everybody is fangirling over like to introduce themselves? <laughs> Do you want me to introduce myself? Oh yes, yes please. <laughs> right, right now? Um, it's, uh, uh, I'm just David Kay from, uh, from Burbank, California. <laughs> and I'm sure the weather is actually very nice over there right now. <laughs> oh yeah, every, every day is every day's nice. As long as there's not an earthquake or a, a, a fire, um, everything's, everything's generally fine. Yeah, fires don't sound that great in, in the long run. <laughs> no, no, they're, they're not good. I, I would like to know though, because I was looking over all your roles and I noticed that you have a quite a, a wide range of voices. You know, you go from a little robot clank all the way to a, a bigger robot, Megatron, and you know, something dark and deep like Sashomaru. Did you develop your range over the years or was it something that sort of came to you? Um, I guess, well, I guess over the more, you know, more time in front of a microphone and, and screwing around, um, you get is always good. but. I think it probably started in in grade school, in um, like probably second or third grade. Started mimicking teachers and, and was uh, generally standing in the hallway uh, because of that. Um, I did I did a lot of mimicking when I was in school, a lot of goofing around. I, I guess I mean I, my marks were always great. I was always a good student, but I I did sort of for whatever reason gravitate to mimicking people or making voices and just. That sort of thing. So um, I, I guess it's part of my nature. And still, I mean, I had an audition yesterday for there's a bunch of things. Something from Disney came down, and I had to sing, and I had to come up with a character. And he was a he was he was a, um, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, um, they they charge out of the bush. They have tusks. Um. <laughs> a, a rhino? <laughs> no, no, you know, uh, like a. Uh, it's, it's like a pig with fur. You know what are they call it? Uh, oh, 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 uh, like a like wild boar. Yes, wild yes. Boar. Yeah. So I had to come up with with that, and you, and I'm, it's just sort of like, well, okay, it has kind of a pig nose, and and they want him gruff, so he's kind of, and so you start, you, you start, you start, you know, like this, and they want him kind of funny, and and uh, oh, kind of, kind of, they wanted him kind of warm and friendly too, but they can get really mad, and so you you start. You know, fooling around with the character, and I am always coming up with new new stuff. If that makes any sense. No, I can understand it. It's kind of interesting that you say, you know, back when you were a little kid, you did all of the impressions and whatnot, and you tried to do that. So it was kind of. It sounds like it was something you sort of fell into the the spotlight and you know the voices and whatnot. Yeah, it was either doing that when I was that age, or or, or it was uh, shooting uh, army men with my elastic and my ruler. It was either going to be that career. Or the voice career, and I think I picked the right one. I, I would say I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, specifically with uh, anime, I, I believe you're more more or less known for uh, acting as Sashomaru in in Yasha. And I'm curious, with anime specifically, is, is that one of your favorite roles, or do you have a favorite? Uh, in uh, anime, I always prefer doing things like with other actors in the room. Uh, and that's done a lot, a lot of pre light The anime stuff, uh, I did a lot of work with um, um, Inner Pacific Productions uh, when I used to live up in Vancouver. And one of the series that, that you know came through there was, uh, I think I, I worked with uh, Toshi uh, before from his video on um, uh, Ron the One Half. And from just you know working with them and having a lot of fun in the room. There's another project came and it was the uh, the Sashomaru and Toshi said have a you know I, I want you to read this role and see and I sat down in a chair and just basically didn't do anything and I ended up getting the role so and that and that was well, I guess it was seven seven years of of, of that um, but the, it's been most I guess that's the funnest role because I used to just get come in and sit in a chair and turn the lights down low and and. <laughs> And joke around now and again, and, and have a line here and there. That was fun. So definitely, you prefer prelay because you get to react off of other actors. Then. Yeah, you, there's more playroom. You know, there's, 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 it hasn't been drawn yet. It's not. It's not set in stone. You can't. If, if the mouth flaps, don't don't yell or scream, or they don't do something different. You, you're you're kind of limited. It's also a challenge too, which is also kind of fun because you got to try and bring something to it with with that in mind. So it's a different it's a different skill. 
um, generally they're only in you're the only person in the booth and there's the engineer and uh, the director so there's not many and Toshi would be there sometimes or whoever was you know producing the show um, and I, I liked it so much uh, because of the people involved too I mean working with Carl Wilms and and it was just we we just got a you know a lot of laughs when we were in the studio doing doing uh, doing the anime stuff and I didn't really realize about the subculture until I was invited to my first con and 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 uh, you know it was eye opening and it was really it was really cool to see and meet some of the artists and other voice people and, and the fans it was uh, it was pretty pretty fun. How did the fandom react? Were you a little bit scared uh, when you oh, saw all the ongoing? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean. I, I was in the comics and I was in all kinds of stuff when I was, I was younger and still am. And into you know, I love sci-fi and horror movies and, and that sort of thing. And there's a, there's a, so no, I totally totally get it. And it was, and everybody came together. And it was, uh, there was never any at these big conventions. You know, there's thousand, two thousand, sometimes three thousand people milling about throughout the weekend, as you know. And and I mean, sure, people you know get into trouble here and there, but otherwise, it's really a fun weekend. And you meet everybody from the young little babies and uh, to uh, to families and you know, the kids are totally into it and it's uh, I think it's great and it's what I really like about anime is uh, the whole cross-culture thing about you know the Japanese and American culture and how they and how we you know we have a, a better understanding because this form of animation and, and, and the show has opened up that whole that whole uh, side of the world to people so it's, it's kind of neat no, it definitely, I think, has exposed a lot of people to different cultures, and the fan base for, for anime just seems to be growing, which is kind of, you know, surprising. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> and now I'm curious, you've also done work in video games as well. C can you compare video games to anime at all, or not at all? Uh, it's it's more like a prelay cartoon, uh, nowadays anyway. I mean, there were times when I used to do stuff for, for EA, and it was like a, a big, giant... Uh, it was you know four to six hours in a studio and sometimes it's screaming and, and I, I just I don't have time for that I got other things that I'm, I'm doing um, and then nowadays like for when we're doing Ratchet and Clank as Clank I'll go in and I'll get a few lines and there'll be a few scenes and so it's you're not in there all day long they they do the animatics and the, the game is developed over a year or a year and a half or whatever and so there's time um, and uh, it, it's much, yeah. It's much like a cartoon, uh, doing a cartoon series. Uh, some of these uh, video games, and a lot of them have, have launched into feature films. And they've uh, gone on to, uh, to cartoons, and they become, you know, there's three or four of them that, that follow if this franchise is successful. And it's been a ton of fun as well to uh, to record those. We record the Ratchet and Clank series, and a lot of those stuff here in Burbank, and, and some of it in Hollywood, and various studios around town. Uh, but it's also fun. That's actually really interesting to me, and we're going to take a very short break, find out when we come back what your upcoming projects are, so keep it tuned to 91.8 The Pan. Everything you want, nothing you don't. All you have to do is answer the phone. Aye, aye, Captain. Is this 918 The Fan? No, this is Patrick. Are you sure this isn't 918 the fan? No, this is Patrick. Look, I'm pretty sure this is 918 the fan. No, this is Patrick. Patrick, that's the name of the restaurant. Huh? Hey, everybody, we're back, and this is 91.8 the fan. You're Sitting in Connor's corner, I also have David Kay sitting in my corner, and we are just chilling. And I'm curious, actually, about any upcoming projects you have or projects that just came out that you can talk about us and enlighten the listeners. Sure. Um, you ever heard of Flapjack? Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, I worked on Flapjack. We were doing some pickups yesterday for um, a goofy character I did. Um, that's one of the funnest uh, shows I've, I've ever been on. <laughs> it's, just, it's so out there. I love it. There's another show called The Right Eater Show. Um, same um, uh, JG can tell. Uh, young, young, funny writer and, and a cartoon guy here 
in L.A. Uh, on the Cartoon Network, and that, that series is coming up, and I've done it a bunch of times. Did a couple of Scooby-Doo episodes, and they should be coming up this summer as well. And I actually get to, to say the line that I, I used to sit down and watch on the sofa when I was a kid, Saturday mornings, and eat Captain Crunch cereal and watch Scooby-Doo. And they're doing another, you know, Frank Welker's in the room, and Maurice LaMarche, and uh, I, I know them uh, both well now, and it's, it's so much fun to work with them, Crease Summer, and, and I got to say the line, if it weren't for you meddling kids. And I was so, I couldn't believe I, I, I got that line. Um, so that's coming out, Avatar the Game. Um, I was on, on, on that Planet Hulk. There's some stuff in there that we that uh, just released. And um, let's see what else is uh, what else is happening. There's uh, Assassin's Creed 2, which is out. Did a bunch of Italian stuff in that. Um, um, up. You can still you can still buy the DVD. Um, the first four minutes of Up is, is uh, I, I worked for Pixar, and that was a trip. And uh, basically, uh, everything from movie trailers, Hot Tub Time Machine, to network television, to Family Guy promos for Fox, to commercials, you name it. It's sort of all over the, all over the map. I never get a chance to figure out who I am from uh, moment to moment, but that's the fun part of it. Well, you're definitely keeping busy. I'm curious, are you feeling any of the economic downturn at all? Uh, no, I'm unfortunate. Um, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and 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 uh, it's it keeps on rolling. I mean, maybe not the volume. Apparently, people were used to uh, in the VO business, but I'm unfortunate that it's. Uh, I still have my business doing radio and television uh, promotional branding and identification. You know, the new stuff you watch the news channels and done and eyewitness news. You know, I mean, I do a lot of that, and that's a totally different thing from doing narration to doing video games to doing you know animation. And I, I, I got to say, um, the important part of that, one of the reasons it probably hasn't affected uh, me is I got a great bunch of people working uh, with me. Um, my agents are incredible, DPN, my manager. Um, and so to have a good team of people together is so important because if you don't have that, you don't get access to the stuff. You don't even not even reading for it. Um, so that's a really important thing for anybody looking to get into the industry. That's a big. You got a good agents and good people and. And uh, and that that's a that's a big part of it. So I'm very 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 fortunate and very thankful. That's actually quite interesting because I hear kind of a mix between whether or not people should get an agent or not. And so I I've actually haven't seen the the pros for getting an agent very often. So it's interesting that you say that, and I think our listeners will appreciate that. Well, you can you don't have to get an agent, but you know there's no you're not getting any benefits. So when you retire, you get nothing there. And the second one, you're not getting access to some of the top stuff. So why would you, you know, why wouldn't you want to, if you're, when you're going to do something, why would you not want to go big, you know, or go all the way with it? I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's awesome, uh, but uh, you're never going to get that, that access. So. And that, that, that doesn't pay as well, and you're not getting the benefits uh, again. So there's two schools of thought. I'm just happy I'm, i got a great team. So. Awesome. And I'm curious, is there any way for our listeners to be able to track, you know, any upcoming projects you're in? Do you have a website or a social media that you update? Yeah, davidk.com. Um, we're always kind of throwing stuff up. We're so behind. If anybody has any uh, good quality digital uploads on any of the cartoons, we're so, I, I, I'm trying to get the animation stuff. We're so lack, lacking in the animation side. We just did the new website. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, just davidk.com. Um, I don't know how to use Twitter. I've, I'm on there, but I haven't got a clue, and I haven't got time. Uh, I wish I did, but I just, I just don't. Uh, Facebook, uh, there's a uh, friend of mine that's actually set up a page where um, I can upload stuff, and, and uh, I have to be—I have to actually have a moment to go. Oh, God, I got to put that up on there. But that's another way to, to keep in contact. Uh, <laughs> so when the day is when the day's over, I look forward to. Uh, it's actually uh, to sleeping about 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night. No, I can so, yeah. I can understand how it's yeah. hard to update those, and a lot of people haven't even upgraded. So at least you have it. You just yeah. don't have the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where like, oh, I gotta, uh, I don't want to do this. I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> I just gotta have another donut. Put this sprinkles on it. Give me a donut. I can't do Facebook right now. I'm busy eating my donut. <laughs> No, I, I'm curious. Before before uh, we we let you go, do you have any conventions that you're going to this year that uh, oh, you can yeah, tell? I, I am. Uh, Toronto. I think I'm going to Toronto in 
July, is it the 17th, 18th weekend? It's that Saturday, Sunday. And my good buddy, Eric Bowser, um, I mean, some of you people know who Eric is. He's a very good friend of mine. He's funny as hell. And uh, he's an, also an animator. And he'll be there on a Sunday. Then we're going to be hanging out for that, that weekend. Um, so it'll be in Toronto. And I think that it's, it's um, what is it? Uh, I can't remember the, the, the name of it, but it's a convention, Transformers or a BotCon thing in Toronto, July 17th, 18th weekend. Just look it up on Google it, and it'll be, you'll find it. We'll definitely look for it and then uh, keep our listeners updated on that. Is there any other places you might be going to? Next year I'm going back to uh, Birmingham, England, I think, in 2011. Ooh, so that's a nice there's travel. No, yeah, as long as there's no uh, volcanoes. I think we'll, uh, 2011, August 2011. Now that's, that's, that's premature, but with, uh, we're in talks. <laughs> I think it's sound <laughs> important. <laughs> Would you say... <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that going to the the different conventions, especially when you get to travel pretty much, you know, like across the world, would you say that's a, that's a lot of fun? Oh yeah, it is tiring, you know. Um, uh, it, it's I, I like to have I to, when I go to these things, I like to have time to to walk around and see where I actually am. I was in New Zealand and uh, it was fun meeting all the the fans there and I was doing the autograph thing. And, and as soon as I was finished, I'd, I'd take off and walk. I walked all around Auckland. I just went. Um, I, I love to see where, uh, where, uh, where I am when I go to places. Um, but, yeah, it's been, it's been phenomenal. It's a great experience. Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I just go to ones in the U.S., but I, as press, so we usually run around like chickens without their heads, so we don't get to really take in much of anything. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. yeah. I, I make sure I try. I tried in Amsterdam, meeting up with a group over there a few years ago. And that was a trip. I love it. And w- once again, before we let you go, I was wondering if you'd like to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Absolutely not. No. No. Of course. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we w- we ask everybody who comes on whether they'd be a voice actor or not, if they'd be willing to do a bump for us. A bump. Oh yeah. Yes, of course. We were wondering if you could say, and we do this live on air, so for any mess-ups, uh, if you could say, my name is, I do this, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Okay. I'm David Kay. I play the Shomaru, and you're tuned in 91.8 The Fan. Oh, wow, perfect. Stop no mess-ups. It. Stop it, Jockin. Stop it, Jockin. <laughs> Uh, very rarely do we ever have any any voice actors that don't have bloopers. So congratulations. <laughs> oh, thanks. I could make a blooper, but I don't. I don't think so. I, mean, you want, you want uh, <laughs> I think I think we're all okay. We'll we'll keep your image all high up there with a lot of dignity instead of making oh, yeah. you do a blooper. <laughs> oh, which that image? Oh, okay. <laughs> and is there images. is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? No, I just I'm I'm. Uh, I was completely in awe of you guys, and I just, I just, uh, and I, I can't thank you enough for, you know, um, because it, again, if it wasn't for for you guys and, and, and the fan base and and, um, and the anime, you know, what what are we doing? So um, you're always every time we're doing a show or doing a game. I mean, I always have, I always have you on my, you know, on my mind, and it's uh, it's not just about doing. It's, I mean, the work is totally fun, but it's not just about that. It's not about any sort of paycheck thing. It's, it's really, um, you know, it means something to people, and that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, if I can be a part of that, then, then, then great. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh well, thank you for being on the show. We really appreciated it. My pleasure. And for everybody out there, if you missed any of this interview, shame on you. I'm going to come after you with a hammer. And, but you can catch it up on the website over at 918thefan.com. So stay tuned to your favorite station. Everything you want, nothing you don't.